the best starting five from every draft class. The idea is simple. We're going through each draft and seeing the best lineup we can come up with based on how good players are currently playing. We must have a player from every position and it must be the true position that they play. We're also assuming that everyone's healthy and starting with 2005 with Chris Paul, Lou Williams, CJ Miles, Marvin Williams, and Andrew Bogut. Okay, and as you can see here, there's not many quality players still left from the 2005 NBA draft. But I mean, to be honest, there really even wasn't at the time. Besides the players I mentioned, Darren Williams, Danny Granger, and Andrew Bynum were the only other ones from this draft class to be all-stars, and as we all know, their careers eventually fell off. Then besides them, Nate Robinson and Monte Ellis were really the only other people who had above average careers. And for this being their five that's still left in the league, the backcourt's definitely still solid, but as a whole it probably makes them the worst lineup on this list. Then you fast forward one year later to 2006, and there's a big step up here in the quality of players, with Kyle Lowry, JJ Redick, Rudy Gay, Paul Millsap, and LaMarcus Aldridge. Two guys that were all-stars last season, and three starters on playoff teams. And unlike the 2005 squad, this five could still do some damage in the league today. They'd have a hard time making the playoffs in the Western Conference, but definitely could in the East. With Lowry and Rudy being great all around, JJ still being able to shoot the lights out, and Millsap and Aldridge both being able to hold down the paint or spread the floor. There's solid players at every position, but currently, this is still one of the worst lineups for the video. But then we get to 2007, and they may very well be a playoff team in either conference, with Mike Conley, Marco Bellinelli, Kevin Durant, Al Horford, and Mark Gasol. Their only weakness would be at shooting guard, but besides that, they have everything they need. Assuming KD was healthy, they have their star player, their near star in Mike Conley, and a great supporting cast in the front court. I mean, we already saw what Conley and Gasol could do together when we saw them in Memphis. They were one of the top real threats in the Western Conference for years, and mainly for their defense. But then adding another defensive threat in Horford would shut down most front courts in the league. And you already know the offensive side of things would be taken care of with KD. And we continue to get better with these lineups as we move to 2008. Because the lineup of Russell Westbrook, Eric Gordon, Danilo Gallinari, Kevin Love, and Brooke Lopez is just as good. We'll be getting to see Russ and Eric Gordon as teammates this year, and we saw Russ and Love play together in college but then we'd be combining the three of them with the sharpshooting Brooke Lopez and a 20 point per game scorer in Gallinari. And none of these were the top three picks in the draft that year, with those being Derrick Rose, Michael Beasley, and OJ Mayo. All players whose careers didn't turn out as expected for one reason or another. And while this five is solid, you definitely have to consider them a playoff team. Probably not too much more than that. I mean, I wouldn't say they have championship potential or anything, but the 2009 draft class definitely does. With their starters being Steph Curry, James Harden, Damari Carroll, Blake Griffin, and Taj Gibson. And this may very well be the best lineup in the video, only being challenged by a couple of other ones. And certainly one of the best draft classes overall. We even had to leave off two all-star caliber players in DeMar DeRozan and Drew Holiday, as well as Patrick Beverly. But as for these five, you got the best point guard in the league, the best shooting guard, who are both former MVPs, and a top three power forward. It does hurt them that DeMar Carroll was really the only true small forward still playing, and there were no current centers. So I could have just left them as a starting four, but instead just threw in Taj Gibson. I mean, there wasn't many centers at all in this draft class in general, aside from Jordan Hill, who's retired, and Hashim Thabit, who went second overall, but was a bust. But I mean, with all this star power, they really don't need great players at every position, just players who aren't terrible at their jobs. Because with Steph, Blake, and James, the offensive side of the game is going to be taken care of. With that said, they clearly do lack in defense, though. But this lineup still does have the edge over most, just simply because these guys are all in the middle of their primes right now which does give a team like this championship potential, but they're still not the perfect starting five. And then things really drop off when we get to the class of 2010, which consists of John Wall, Avery Bradley, Paul George, Derek Favors, and Hassan Whiteside. I mean, people are worried to see how well John Wall will return from his injuries, and Eric Bledsoe was also in this draft class, but I'm hoping the former first overall pick doesn't drop off that much to where Bledsoe would deserve his spot, which was why I kept him as this class's starting point guard. And even if Wall still isn't the best, the rest of this offense would be taken care of with the help of Paul George, on top of him and Avery Bradley taking care of the other end as well. Then Whiteside and Favors are really more of wild cards, because we've seen both of them have big years in the past, but recently have 
haven't been as good. As long as at least one of them could have a big game each night though, I think they'd be good. And overall, this isn't a terrible 5, but compared to some of the others on this list, it's not great because they're mainly lacking on outside shooting and consistency. It is worth mentioning though that along with Bledsoe, Gordon Hayward and DeMarcus Cousins were the other players from this draft left off the starting five. And now these next two draft classes both have the chance of being the best of the entire video, starting with the 2011 five of Kyrie Irving, Klay Thompson, Kawhi Leonard, Tobias Harris, and Nikola Vucevic. I mean, we're talking four all-stars and one all-star snub in the same lineup. Five players that all averaged at least 20 points per game, combined with a perfect blend of offense and defense. The third best point guard in the league, the second best shooting guard, the best small forward, a top five power forward, and a top 10 center. I mean, it's without a doubt a championship level team, and is more like a potential lineup in the all-star game. Klay Thompson's used to playing off the ball already. Kyrie's proving he can play with small forwards. Kawhi will be Kawhi. Tobias will be ready to hit open threes or fill in wherever he's needed. And Nikola will take care of whatever's left over. And altogether, 2011 was a strong class, with Bojan Bogdanovic, Jimmy Butler, Isaiah Thomas, Kimba Walker, and Nikola Mirotic all also coming from this draft. And I gotta say, I think this is the best five of any current draft class, but 2012 still really competes with this because of how complete it is from top to bottom, with Damian Lillard, Bradley Beal, Chris Middleton, Anthony Davis, and Andre Drummond. And again, we're far past the level of this being a championship team, and it once again consists of four all-stars and a near all-star level player. I mean, Damon AD would run the show, and playing with each other would make both guys rank even higher on the MVP ladder than they already always do. Then Beal and Middleton would be excellent third and fourth options, with Andre Drummond being the perfect fit at center. Plus, you gotta combine 111 points per game from these five alone. And it's crazy, this is one of the best current lineups from a single draft class, and all of these guys aren't even fully in their primes yet. They still got a lot of room to get better. Then the other star from 2012 that didn't make this starting five was Draymond Green. I will say though that I think that 2009, 11, and 12 draft classes have the top three starting fives. So comment and rank them with your thoughts down below. And while you do that, here's the five from 2013. And I gotta say, this would be another one of the top lineups with Dennis Schroeder, Victor Oladipo, Otto Porter, Giannis, and Rudy Gobert. They may lack at point guard and small forward, but those are still good position players to go along with an all-star, a reigning MVP, and a defensive player of the year. And I mentioned it in my last video that this draft class originally looked really really weak. I mean, the top five picks were Anthony Bennett, Victor Oladipo, Otto Porter, Cody Zeller, and Alex Lynn. And the expectations for Oladipo weren't even that high back then. But since 2013, a few guys have come out and surprised everyone to make this class surprisingly good. Because there's the five we mentioned, along with CJ McCollum, Steven Adams, and Tim Hardaway, who didn't make a team of the starters. This five, though, would definitely be one of the best defensively and could easily hold their own on offense, too. 2014 goes to Spencer Dinwiddie, Zach Levine, Andrew Wiggins, Julius Randle, and Nikola Jokic. This lineup's still solid, but not as good as some of the others we've seen. And it was tough because there were a lot of solid players that all played similar positions coming into the league this year, with other centers like Yusuf Nurkic, Clint Capella, and oh yeah, Joel Embiid at center. I had to give the slight edge to Jokic though, because in my opinion, they're extremely close in terms of who's better, and in the long term it could go either way. But in the playoffs this past season, Joel averaged 20, 10, and 3 on 30% from 3. And Jokic, in his first ever playoff appearance, averaged 25, 13, and 8 on 40% from 3. So I had to give him the slight edge here. And as far as everyone else in this video, we had guys like Jabari Parker, Aaron Gordon, and Gary Harris who were all great, but not the best in their position. Which is how this was the lineup we ended up with. Then 2015 is surprisingly a great full lineup with how young they all are. Having D'Angelo Russell, Devin Booker, Justice Winslow, Kristaps Porzingis, and Carl Anthony Towns. Three guys who have all been all-stars, and one guy that will be one in no time. And these four all have the potential to be the best player at their position maybe five years down the line. Justice is the weak point of the lineup, but even he isn't too bad. And I mean, it's insane that all of these guys are under 23 and already as good as they are. Plus, a lineup with all of these guys would immediately be a real threat in the postseason. There's floor generals in the backcourt and dominance in the frontcourt. It's already one of the best starting fives we've seen in this video, but in a few years it could definitely be approaching that top spot. The next is 2016 that has Ben Simmons, Buddy Heald, Brandon Ingram, Pascal Siakam, and Zubak. And this lineup isn't fantastic because we've gotten to the point now where players are so young that they all haven't had a chance to prove themselves and fully develop. 
And there's still guys like Jalen Brown, Jamal Murray, DeMontis Sabonis, Karis LeVert, DeJounte Murray, and Malcolm Brogdon who could maybe take one of these spots in a few years. For now though, all of these guys are in a position to where they can take huge jumps this year, so this lineup may be looking a lot better towards the end of the season. And this would easily be an Eastern Conference playoff team, but would cut things pretty close to being a top 8 team in the Western Conference. 2017, De'Aaron Fox, Donovan Mitchell, Kyle Kuzma, John Collins, and Bam Adebayo. Again, these guys are in the same position, they haven't had too long in the league. They still got a solid lineup though, and I'd say 4 out of the 5 of them have star potential. Originally I had Jason Tatum at small forward, because I was forgetting about Kuzma. And I didn't like how the lineup looked with Tatum, but Kuz makes them seem a lot better. It is going to be exciting to see which of these guys turns out to be the best player though. Right now I'd say things are leaning towards Donovan Mitchell, but it could still go any different way. And overall this is still going to be a great class. With other players like Tatum, Dennis Smith, Lonzo Ball, OG Ananubi, Derek White, and Josh Hart. And the 2018 draft class is going to be great too, with their starting five being Trey Young, Landry Shamit, Luka Doncic, Marvin Bagley, and DeAndre Ayton. It's finally looking like this is a draft where all of the top 5 players are actually going to be great. Things could change and players could drop off, but right now it's not looking like any of them will. And that's pretty uncommon for a draft as you've seen through this video. There's always at least a few busts within the top few picks, but scouts did good this year and players did even better living up to the hype. Trey and Luka obviously have the biggest star potential, but that's not to say that Bagley and Aiden won't turn into superstars too one day. And then I think Shamit's gonna turn out to be a great role player for a long time. And as for how this 5 would do if they were in the league, I can't confidently say they'd be a playoff team because, I mean, they were just rookies. But I love this 5 now, and will even more in a couple of years. And then we're not gonna include the 2019 draft class because they haven't played an NBA game yet. But if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click on one of the two on screen to see another one like it. And while you're at it, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.